Hi, I'm Jessica Amir for the Finance News Network. Today we're talking everything you need to know about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin's massive rise, and despite the Fed, the RBA, and ASICs warning against it, we're talking what the future holds. Today I'm joined by CEO of Soho Capital, Justin Dambrowski. Hi Justin and welcome. Thank you. So what do you make of people saying that Bitcoin's not as liquid and usable as other currencies? And if so, does this spell Bitcoin's doom? It's it's certainly true that it's not nearly as liquid um, as other currencies out there, but that's not to say that it's not liquid. Uh, there are plenty of ways that one can go about getting into Bitcoin or getting out of Bitcoin um, with uh, dozens of different cryptocurrency exchanges. But it is certainly true that if you're thinking about it from the point of view of an investment manager, um, it's harder to take the kind of positions that one might want. Um, there's not many places when one can go buy $100 million trenches or $10 billion tranches and, and um, Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency for that matter. But that's not to say, you know, it's not valuable, right? Um, because if you think about it, uh, just like you would any other commodity, um, you, you might buy it and hold it um, independent of its actual utility. Gold is a great uh, counterpart to this. People often talk about as Bitcoin being a digital gold. And in some ways that analogy makes some sense and a lot of ways it doesn't. But one area where it does is the fact that it kind of recognizes that nobody's running around looking for opportunities to buy and sell gold out on the street or use it to pay for the coffee or anything else like that. Um, what you do is you buy and hold it as a store of value and you sell it when you think um, it's peaked and you buy something else instead. That's the way a lot of people handle Bitcoin right now. They buy it as a speculative asset. Alternatively, there's one thing that you can do with things like Bitcoin that you can't do with things like gold. You can get into things like these token sales, these ICOs that um, are uh, a way of investing in early stage companies that are trying to raise some capital. Um, often uh, some of them are highly speculative, some of them are incredibly interesting though. There is a natural alternative market there that one can get into. So it's, it's an incredibly interesting space, um, it's evolving, uh, a lot's happening right now. Look at it for what it really is. Um, it's, it's a very young uh, burgeoning area right now and if you want to get in, that's the mindset you have to have. And there's hundreds of cryptocurrencies on the market, but why is Bitcoin so unique? In a real simple way, I think the, one of the things that makes Bitcoin unique is just the fact that it got there first. Bitcoin is the very first cryptocurrency that was available. Um, it's the cryptocurrency by which every other one is measured. Um, and as you mentioned, there are lots of other ones out there. Somebody once um, asked, you know, basically because of a range of Bitcoin's flaws, uh, is it likely that it would become a Bitcoin 2.0? And the answer is surely yes and no. Um, on the one hand, people aren't likely to give up their holdings in Bitcoin anytime soon because there's so much invested in it. Um, but on the other hand, there have been lots of other cryptocurrencies that have popped up uh, that try to correct some of Bitcoin's perceived flaws. And some of them are actually going quite rapidly. Does this mean that Bitcoin will retain its crown forever? Um, I doubt it over time, um, but who knows? I think the important thing to recognize is that there are actually other ones that have other value propositions that they offer. Um, and it's because those are recognized as such, uh, things like Ether, for example, Dash, uh, Zcash, Monero, to name a few, they all have value propositions that make them special and all have value propositions that make people want to invest in them. So um, I guess what I'd say is it's unique, but its uniqueness isn't something that necessarily will overshadow the rest of the market forever. Justin, how much upside do you think there is? Some analysts are saying that Bitcoin could go to $50,000 by 2018, but what's your view? I don't have a particularly strong view about where I think the price will be, but I do think it's going to go up. Um, I mentioned uh, Michael Novogratz before. Uh, he said that he thinks within the next few months you could see the price as high as uh, $40,000 US. Um, there's a Forbes article that came out recently that thinks maybe 100000 by 2020. Um, and I've read uh, you know, studies that have been done of people comparing uh, the Bitcoin world to the internet bubble and saying there could be as much as four to six X growth room left uh, for it to go before the bubble pops um, or before there's a peak, really. I guess my own view is that uh, I think the things to pay attention to are the fact that um, it's very difficult to make the argument that the fact that institutions are getting more interested in it, albeit gradually, um, and more and more individuals are getting into Bitcoin, albeit gradually, um, is priced into the current price of Bitcoin, which is to say that there's probably an awful lot more room to grow. So if you wanted to get invested in it now, you might not um, make the kinds of returns that you would have if you invested in a few years ago, um, but you'd still get something. Um, and among the things I'd also probably mention is that Bitcoin isn't the only game in town. Uh, you should be looking at Ether, looking at Litecoin, looking at some of the other ones I've mentioned, um, and taking account of the fact that there are other ones that um, could also grow too. And what do you make of some fund managers like BlackRock saying it's going to be a bubble? Uh, I think it's entirely possible that this could be a bubble. But I think one of the tricks is um, it's difficult to assess whether we're at you know, the very beginning of the bubble or where we're edging towards the peak. My own 
opinion is probably it's, it's on the earlier side, if I had to guess, but I could totally be wrong. Um, but another question we have to ask is what would a pop actually look like if it is in fact a bubble? If Bitcoin continues to get market traction and greater utility and being used for other things, it's entirely possible that the pop might be more of a slight deflation than it might actually be a proper pop. And I just think it's very difficult to know, and it really will depend on what you think these kind of cryptocurrencies, or Bitcoin in particular, might end up doing over the next several years. And I think that's a tough question to answer. So what's your advice to people who are thinking about getting into Bitcoin or cryptocurrency? I think it now is still a decent time uh, to try to get invested in the space, and, but I would encourage people not to spend too much money on it. Um, it is speculative, as Yellen and uh, the RBA and everybody else, uh, I think, recognizes. Uh, that doesn't make it bad. Um, I think if you buy, you should buy for the long term and hold rather than just get out. Um, and you should be paying attention to what actually happens to the market, um, what the chatter is and what people do. But there are very easy ways um, for anybody in Australia or even globally to get invested in the space. You download something like the CoinJar app, um, or you can get into Binance, or you can get into you know, Coinbase or something like that. Um, you link a bank account or a credit card account and you can buy straight from there very easily. It's a very simple thing to do. Um, and from there, you know, you deposit and withdraw whenever you feel like it. It's the kind of investment where you don't want to necessarily bet the farm on right now. Um, what you might want to do is, um, you know, get accustomed to it, buy a little bit, and then hang on to it. But don't read up, pay attention to the news. Um, it's, it's moving, developing at a rapid pace. Well, Justin Dombrowski, thank you so much for the insights. Well, thanks for having me.